Hello and welcome to the latest Celebrate webinar. This one is tailored for the APAC region and it will cover the keys to unlocking critical evidence from encrypted digital devices with Celebrate Advanced Services. We thank you all for joining and we hope that you enjoy the next hour presentation. For those that have uh, signed up for this, uh, if you're obviously not able to join, uh, if you're some of your colleagues have signed up, then you will receive uh, a link at the end of this with access uh, in the next couple of days to a recorded version of this webinar. On the webinar panel today is myself, Dan Embry, Technical Director of Advanced Services. We also have Desmond So. He is based in Singapore and he is a Technical Forensic Specialist with Advanced Services. Finally, we have Simon Woolley. He's a Senior Technical Forensic Specialist based in Canberra, Australia and he has recently joined us uh, in September and he will have more to talk about our new opening of the Canberra Lab. In terms of the agenda for the webinar, we are going to be covering an introduction of Celebrate Advanced Services and an overview of the current forensic landscape. We will also cover some of the unique We will also come, cover some of the unique unlocking and extraction capabilities and how to submit a case to one of our Celebrate Forensics labs via Celebrate Advanced Services. We'll wrap up with a question and answer session and any questions that are not able to be answered during the webinar, we will make sure to reach out to you after and provide the answers that you are seeking. In terms of housekeeping, uh, all of you should have a clear view of the ON24 platform for the webinar. Uh, in the bottom corner, you should see a question and answer button or a window should already be appearing. Uh, essentially, everyone is muted during the webcast, but if, if you do have any questions, we encourage you to type your question into the box and we will do our best to answer your question during the final 15 minutes of the webinar. In terms of introduction, for those that are not familiar with Celebrate Advanced Services, we are basically the forward-thinking, cutting-edge providers for new and advanced solutions from Celebrate uh, directly. Uh, the security research labs are constantly evolving and creating new solutions that are ultimately going to be destined for our UFED products, but we are able to offer them to our customers as quickly as possible to address your most critical needs. And it's pretty clear these days that mobile devices are playing a defining role in criminal investigations. And obviously the information contained within a locked device, uh, once liberated, can help to reveal the truth and most definitely lead to significant case breakthroughs. Over the past few years, Celebrate Advanced Services has evolved from the initial iOS 8 breakthrough that allowed us to access the data within the iPhone 4S, the 5, and the 5C to a more comprehensive ability to unlock uh, many different devices, as well as provide advanced extraction services to ensure that best evidence is, is extracted to further the investigation. Celebrate Advanced Services, as was mentioned previously, provides advanced unlocking, advanced extraction, and additionally, advanced technical capability. So these are unique uh, solutions that we're able to offer in-house and through trusted partners to bring advanced technical capability to your most important cases. Additionally, our team is comprised of many different experts, uh, situated around the world. So we have a unique position of being able to offer professional advisory services to help review cases that are complex, uh, basically give a second set of eyes to look over evidence and prepare the best case in conjunction with you so that you can see through to, to a successful prosecution. Finally, by having global coverage, we are able to respond to operational urgencies and mass events that may occur in this uh, world that's evolving into, uh, in some situations, a dangerous place. Obviously, there's, there's terror attacks that are happening 
all over the world and uh, other sorts of uh, ter terrible situations. And Celebrate's very proud to be able to help out immediately uh, and then in most situations uh, get into devices that would otherwise not be possible to unlock and extract. I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague Simon in, in Canberra, and he's going to cover the next uh, few slides here. Afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon Woolley, and I'm one of the senior forensic technical specialists uh, in Australia. Uh, we now have eight labs around the world, um, and we'll start with uh, the US side. So we have a lab currently in uh, Washington. We also have a lab in New Jersey, a lab in Canada, a lab in the United Kingdom, in London specifically. We have a lab in Germany, which is in Munich. We also have a headquarters in Israel, which also has its own um, forensic lab as well. We have a lab in Singapore, where Desmond, my colleague, uh, is currently. And we also now have a brand new lab in Canberra, Australia, where we offer all the services of the Celebrate Advanced Services, including the unlocking and extraction and extraction of funds. Some of the capabilities we have, oh, not too far. Uh, so we're able to close the time between actually uh, receiving information from our research labs in Israel and are able to unlock uh, the largest amount of phones at our Celebrite labs around the world. We also offer uh, the advanced unlocking and extraction methods uh, that no one else in the world is currently offering. We also maintain the chain of custody and ensure that forensic integrity um, is maintained at all times. And at the end of the process, we also supply a full witness statement um, to comply with standard chain of custody. It also allows us to uh, reduce the time to uh, react to urgent cases uh, and critical cases in our own regions. So specifically for Australia, New Zealand and the Asia Pacific region, we have the Australian lab and the Singapore lab to look after those um, capabilities. So next we'll have Desmond cover some of the uh, digital forensics landscape challenges that all of us are facing as uh, digital forensic practitioners. Hi everyone, my name is Desmond. I'm based in Singapore. I'd like to talk about a little bit uh, on the digital forensic landscape. All right, uh, in the good olden days, we used to extract data by performing the JTAG, ISDA, or even Chipov. But however, because of the uh, forensic method is dying for the hardware. Our challenge actually today is faced against a production of encryption and security and DVI's lock that actually prevent us from getting the case as an artifact to say. This means that our challenge has shifted from a pure low level of reverse engineering to intensive research. Right. Based on the research that was conducted in year 2015, 85% of the forensic practitioner mentioned that the device and applications encryption was their biggest challenge in the mobile forensic. Basically, the slide explains that the, the hardware encryption in Apple that was introduced in about four years ago, before the iPhone 4S, you can do a physical extraction and decoding. But since iPhone 4S and the rest of the device that have entered the market, you can't get into the device due to the hardware encryption. However, since June 2015, Celebrate can obtain the full file system from any Apple devices that was running in any iOS version. This type of extraction is available via our service, advanced services, and you can actually decode the data using the physical analyzer. So what does this mean? Well, from any device, there's always a way to get the data even if the device is locked. At the moment, we support 89% of the Apple devices and 90% in the Samsung devices. I'm pretty sure that you guys are thinking that if we are going to support on the new release, but I can tell you that 
we are working on the latest release to say. And soon, we believe that we will be able to support. And I'm going to hand over to my colleagues uh, to talk about a few more slides. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. And you may have noticed that the uh, trend survey that we previously quoted was dating back to 2015. We've just recently completed a mass uh, campaign to generate more statistics and gather feedback from our customer base to ensure that all of the statistics that are helping to drive our research and our product offering development are, are basically in line with the current needs of today. So although it's 85% based on our previous survey from 2015, uh, we, we wholeheartedly believe that it continues to be a challenge and I believe that the, the number will surely have grown from 85% uh, upwards, which is not boding well for the overall uh, forensic community, especially as we're struggling as a group, all of us, to find ways to get into the latest devices and then liberate the data that's needed to advance an investigation. So this whole concept of Celebrate Advanced Services uh, originated back in 2015 as well. And there was some initial concern that some capability would be withheld from the UFED product and not go into all the new updates that come out every month or so. And uh, what we'd like to t try to do over the next couple of slides is explain why we are keeping some of these capabilities as a service and not incorporating them into the UFED product. So by taking a high-level zoom out and looking at the entire vulnerability research uh, arena uh, and, and looking at the definition of what an actual vulnerability is, uh, it's essentially a weakness uh, of the design or the implementation that can basically lead to something strange happening with a computer system, a network, an application, a mobile device. So the concept is that these things are inherently occurring. They're vulnerable systems uh, that every person on Earth is carrying in their pocket, and it just requires some very focused, uh, very experienced personnel that are working together to do some cutting-edge research in order to find solutions that might uh, benefit the forensic community. So as I previously said, vulnerabilities exist in all products. Uh, perhaps it's because the code is written by humans, uh, they're inherently prone to making mistakes, and especially with the push to market to get devices ready for back to school or for the holiday season, uh, oftentimes hardware limitations might prevent a full and proper implementation of a particular solution for either locking or for encrypting the data. So some of these vulnerabilities are uh, occasionally subtle, sometimes they're not so much, uh, but overall, finding these sorts of vulnerabilities can be very difficult, and they have become very difficult to find. And uh, things like the Google Project Zero and other freelance uh, white hat uh, researchers are really helping to make the computers and mobile devices that we're utilizing much more secure. And of course, we want this as government users. Of course, we want this as individual citizens whose uh, privacy matters are, are paramount. But when it comes to uh, encountering a device that is on the body of a victim that has been murdered, uh, I, I think in the best interest of everybody, it would be good to be able to access the data and per perhaps solve his or her murder. So ultimately, if these vulnerabilities can be turned into something usable for the forensic community, obviously it's going to help out. So there's two concepts for, for, for vulnerabilities. Uh, the name zero day basically means that it is inherent in the product from the first day that it's released, uh, whether it's coming from the factory or if it's software that's pushed out in a new release. On the zeroth day, these vulnerabilities exist. So they're undisclosed, undiscovered, unpatched by the vendor. Once the vendor learns of the vulnerability and they start trying to find a way to fix it, uh, they've either been alerted by some private research or some exposure, uh, even at worst case, uh, techniques do get exposed in court from time to time. So once the vendor realizes and starts trying to fix it, it becomes a one-day vulnerability. So it's more than one day after the product is released. 
Now, the overarching philosophy is that anything that has not been discovered yet is probably best suited for initial release via Celebrate Advanced Services. Anything that is a bit more exposed, something that's already been patched, but is still likely to have a positive benefit for the forensic community, then we will put that into the UFED Touch 2 and the UFED for PC products. There are some things that are still extremely unique, uh, but we do make a judgment call from time to time and determine that it is likely to be patched in the near future or it is so um, obtuse and, and, and uh, strange and it's not going to likely get patched or exposed by putting it into the product. Uh, so we go ahead and do this anyways. So we're always trying to put value into your UFED investment, but from time to time, uh, a breakthrough is so unique and so valuable to prolonging police efforts to be able to combat crime and make the world a safer place, we ultimately decide to keep it as a service to protect it. I'll turn it to Simon now who will talk about uh, sort of the best evidence ideals for performing a full iOS extraction. Hi everyone, uh, so just some information about uh, iOS devices. So we have a iPhone here with a 32 gig of flash memory in it. So one of the possibilities we have currently with just the standard touch would be method one, and that would be uh, possibly a seven gig iTunes backup. Um, that also could be encrypted via an iTunes password. Another option we have via the uh, UFED is a method two, which would be a four gig AFC, um, which is an Apple file conduit uh, extraction. Then you have the 21 gig active file, uh, full, uh, full file system. Now the only way we're going to be able to access that, access that information would be to the a method three, which would be a non-forensic jailbreak. Now having worked in the industry, uh, modifying data via a jailbreak just to access the full file system um, would be a, a, a last resort um, due to the modification of um, data and obviously the implications that would have in court. However, with the Solibot Advanced Services, we're able to do a full forensic um, extraction of the full file system. Um, no modification of the data would take place, which is obviously an ideal situation. Um, there would also be 11 gig of old data on the actual phone as well. Uh, this would be data that's been deleted um, and the uh, AES encryption keys would be um, gone from the system. So we wouldn't be able to access that information at all. Uh, this is some case examples of uh, using a method one, uh, a method two, and also using the Celebrate Advanced Services. Uh, I just want to point out on the uh, iPhone 6 Plus there in the middle, if we look at some of the, uh, the numbers that are being pulled out of uh, locations, for example, uh, with method one there was 362 uh, location uh, pieces of data and 73 deleted and then method two pulled out five. Using the Celebrate Advanced Services through the labs around the world, um, we will be able to pull out 1,557 um, and 97 deleted. So that's a fairly big contrast. Uh, using the iPhone 6 Plus in the middle again, if we look at the images on that phone, uh, 3,000 or so method one, uh, 4,000 method two, and using the uh, Celebrate Advanced Services, we're getting 65,550. So there's a fairly big contrast of um, the amount of data that we're able to pull out using our sort of advanced services laboratories around the world. So some of the things we're able to uh, access using the uh, full file system extraction, we're able to bypass the iTunes backup encryption password. Um, this was a fairly big bugbear when I was working in the um, forensic community. Uh, you would go to extract the phone using a UFED touch and the first thing it would say is, do you have the iTunes backup password? Uh, generally, that wasn't supplied by the uh, suspect, um, meaning that you, uh, you weren't able to extract that data. We're able to gain full file system access, uh, including um, all, the, all the data that's uh, been recently deleted, not the fully deleted information, but the, the recently deleted, deleted uh, data. Um, so we are going to be able to produce the best evidence you can uh, possibly get off that phone. Uh, because of the uh, not having a jailbreak phone, 
software and it's a full forensic, uh, fully forensically sound method, it's going to reduce the number of questions you have at trial. I know when I first started Celebrite, I asked how much information or how much uh, evidence is left that uh, we've been in there to extract the data and the research team basically said that there's, uh, there's not a single trace other than maybe a powering on event um, on the phone itself. And we're also be able to fully extract our iPhone emails. Uh, this was a big bugbear again when I was working in the uh, forensic labs, is that we'd be able to get the from and the to and the subject, but we weren't able, able to get the body of the email. Uh, using our advanced services, we're able to extract full um, emails from iPhones. We can also recover things like Facebook Messenger, BBM, Telegram and other third-party applications. Um, that are normally excluded from the iTunes backups. This includes things like health data and uh, WhatsApp as well. And also the, uh, we re recover a large amount of uh, uh, locations, including on the iPhone the, um, the, the locations of interest, like the most used locations, that generally uh, haven't been able to be accessed by any other um, means at this stage. And also system logs and application logs. Uh, these uh, logs uh, hold a, a wealth of information nowadays and using our system we're able to access that, access that additional data. I'll hand back to Dan now. Thank you, Simon. We did have one question to sort of rewind to slide 17. And I think what's important to understand with this uh, overview is that uh, if you think of the iPhone here as containing 32 gigabytes of flash memory in a single chip, the forensic ideal is to extract everything possible. And over the past uh, seven or eight years, the only capability that has been available is the iTunes backup or the Apple file conduit mechanism. Now, anything that can be seen on the device by the user, uh, plus anything that has been recently deleted, Obviously, that's very important, and that's actually what forms the active full file system. And ideally, that's what should and can be extracted uh, with the proper techniques and methods. Uh, previously, before uh, we came out with our solution a couple of years ago for the full file system, the only way would be to jailbreak the device. And again, it's making changes to the uh, system partition, and it's really not ideal uh, to be explaining in court. So a method three would pop up as an available advanced logical extraction if the device was jailbroken, but alternatively and more forensically sound would be to perform a full extraction from Celebrate Advanced Services. As Simon mentioned, the 11 gigabytes of old data that is outside of the active full file system, there is data present, but all of it is encrypted. There is no ability to carve text or carve images because the data, although it's still there, it's encrypted with keys that have been discarded. So it takes nanoseconds for the encryption keys for a picture to be purged forever. The five megabyte picture might still be in the flash memory, but since the keys are gone, there's no feasible way to brute force AES encryption, at least in our lifetime. So we're going to move ahead into some Android topics and talking about uh, Huawei file-based encryption. Now, for those that recall, back in July of 2018, we had a pretty significant update to the UFED in version 7.8. And in this, we added full support for full disk encryption, FDE, devices that are either locked or unlocked. And we're able to either bypass the lock uh, or if the device is unlocked or the passcode is known, uh, we can produce a full file system extraction. For other devices, and again, it's hard to know precisely what type of encryption is being used on any given Huawei device. Uh, there is some, some consistencies, but even we struggle to determine what uh, it is by looking at the model number. And we really only know for sure until we start working on the device. The good news is, is that we put some pretty good logic into the UFED, and it will indicate whether something is supported or not. And if it's not, uh, in most cases, it's going to be a newer Huawei device with file-based encryption that is locked. And in this situation, the actual 
passcode needs to be brute forced. So if it's a PIN or a pattern or a password, uh, then obviously we have to put forth some effort that is only doable within the Celebrate Event Services uh, CBFL locations. And with that, we're able to produce a full extraction of the file system once we determine the passcode. In a similar fashion, Samsung Secure Startup uh, poses significant challenges to the forensic community. Uh, from our understanding, there is no other solution in the world that can help to get uh, through this sort of passcode. And to the user or to the forensic examiner, this is the sort of image that would be seen on the device when it initially boots up. So it would come up very quickly on the right, uh, black screen for Samsung, and it basically says that the device is encrypted and in order for it to start up and fully mount all the data partitions, you must enter the passcode. And you could have a password as shown here with the full keyboard, there could be a pattern lock or there could be a pin code. There's even something called a direction lock, which is used for uh, accessibility options uh, for handicapped people. And uh, if you really want to play around with it on your Samsung device, go into accessibility and choose a direction lock as your passcode. And you basically draw patterns of up, down, left, and right. Uh, I think it has to be between six and eight directions. And you get some audible feedback and the phone vibrates as well. So it's something that's very suitable for uh, those that require these additional accessibility options to operate the phone. So for this situation, uh, via Celebrate Event Services, when a phone is submitted to the Celebrate Forensics Lab, we would uh, essentially have to brute force the passcode in order to produce the full physical extraction. Now speaking of Android physical extraction, this is where it differs from the iOS world. Since in most situations, uh, full disk encryption, FDE, is utilized, once we are able to get past the encryption, we are able to have access to the full decrypted physical within the phone. And we're able to produce a bit-by-bit -bit copy of all of the flash memory. In some devices, we will extract the block device data as abstract, abstracted in the OS. And then in older phones, we may actually even have ability to uh, have raw access to flash pages. Now, these would be old discarded pages that are not part of the active file system. And it could be interesting for carving small bits of data, either text carving or, depending on the page size, uh, perhaps even thumbnails of pictures or thumbnails of video screenshots. The device file systems can be reconstructed, and in some uh, devices you might see dozens of partitions. Uh, in others there might be uh, maybe eight or ten. Uh, and essentially we can carve within those file systems that are contained within the flash memory for deleted items that are still resident in the unallocated space. So the file system can no longer access it but through intelligent carving available through UFED Physical Analyzer, it may be possible to recover additional data from the unallocated space. So for Samsung devices, the goal obviously is to get a full decrypted physical extraction. In newer versions of Android, there are limitations in terms of what can be backed up using the typical Android backup mechanism. Additionally, there could be third-party applications that rely on keys stored outside of the user accessible space. So in order to fully decrypt the database contents for WhatsApp and Telegram, it is necessary to have the keys in order to perform that decryption within UFED Physical Analyzer. Again, it, it's very uh, difficult to make generalizations based on the number of different handset manufacturers in the Android world, but these are ideals that we strive for, and you'll see in the next few uh, bullets that essentially we've tried to put as much as possible into the UFED in a generic fashion in an easy-to-use push-button solution. Now, there are other methods that might allow you to gain root access, uh, and 
enable you to have a fully mounted decrypted user data partition, but some of these methods will actually wipe the device when you try to root the uh, with root, root the device and, and gain access to what you're trying to, to do. So the beauty of the UFED solutions that we've implemented, they're forensically sound, there's no need to root, everything is temporarily performed in RAM. And what we try to do is, is make better solutions than what might be out there in the flasher box and uh, hacking world. Now something that was uh, present a few years ago, uh, is dirty cow, and this is uh, a, a global vulnerability that affected many, many uh, Linux platforms and, and millions of devices. And cow stands for copy on write, and it was a vulnerability that was discovered by some researchers, and that is what we turned into advanced ADB within the UFED. And this probably helped to liberate data from thousands of devices in hundreds of countries around the world, and basically uh, provide some great benefit to the UFED platform. We also added some interesting Samsung capability uh, about a year and a half ago that allowed for a method to do a physical bootloader but while bypassing the screen lock. Earlier this year, we added the smart ADB capability, and that is basically any device running Android 6 or 7. Uh, the coverage was provided in UFED 7.5, and it provide for a, provides for a full decrypted physical extraction of the device. And this is quite unique uh, in, in terms of the breakthrough that we provided uh, via the UFED platform. Uh, just in September of this year, we added Samsung Physical Bypass for a large number of low-end Samsung devices running Qualcomm processors. Again, bypassing the screen lock, it's not secure startup. Uh, for that, you would have to consult with Celebrate Advanced Services. But essentially, this helps out, and I can't even imagine how many devices this applies to based on the five main Qualcomm chipsets that it supports. And then ultimately, if something's not in UFED, it will be made apparent that additional help may be found via Celebrate Advanced Services. And we've tried to do a good job of adding a little flag that says CAS to make it clear. But in many situations, there's so many different possibilities with the UFED. Uh, we may not have tested every single model out there. We do have 26,000 phones within our, in, within our inventory, but there could be some devices that are just untested in some parts of the world. So we strongly recommend uh, getting a similar device to the case that you're dealing with trying similar profiles, trying generic profiles, and again, uh, making sure that your process is sound uh, before attempting something with the UFED. If you're at your wit's end and you don't have any success happening, uh, we'll definitely help to consult and basically tell you if there's something possible or not via Celebrate Event Services. One unique capability that we've just added over the past couple of months is the ability to extract the secure folder from Samsung devices. Now this is a tremendous breakthrough for anybody that's hidden an application or hidden data within the secure folder that is really quite straightforward for a user to set up on the device. We provide a full uh, archive of the files and folders within the secure folder and it winds up being easily parsed with UFED Physical Analyzer once you receive the deliverables. And we've seen users put Kick Messenger inside the secure folder. We've seen other uh, users put hundreds and hundreds of pictures and movies uh, that they obviously don't want others seeing. So as you can see, we have quite a large amount of capability. Uh, everything will one day make it into UFED. But Celebrate Advanced Services is here to help you gain access to the latest capabilities to solve your most urgent needs. I'm going to turn it to Desmond now, and he's going to go over the case submission process uh, that we've put together for Celebrate Advanced Services customers by way of a community portal. All right, thank you, Dan. All right, basically, I'm going to go through the portal overview. So to start your journey with us, uh, you can actually send in the inquiries uh, to www.celebrite.com slash en slash cas dash sales dash inquiry. 
So basically, in the first step, our sales representative will then send you a required documents and uh, prepare it to quote, basically. And then they will go to the second step when the request has been approved and you will receive an email that contains a voucher and the instructions to submit a case via our advanced service portal. And of course, it's time to open a case. So go to the portal and log in or register for a new account if you are a new user and enter the case information. In the fourth step, we will basically review the case and ensure that the device is supported. And uh, don't send the device until you have received our confirmation, as it will be part of our chain of custody. So this is the portal address. On the fifth step, once the case has been confirmed, you will be receiving an email with a CAS work order and shipment instructions. Or if you are dropping off, a CAS forensic specialist will contact you and arrange a schedule for the drop off. On the sixth step, you will be receiving an email notification about every change in the case status. You can also log into our portal anytime to actively monitor on the progress of the case or you can check with us as well. On the seventh step, you can actually, once we have completed the case, we will send the device back or we will actually arrange a schedule to, for you guys to pick up. Once you have received the device, you can actually log into the portal to acknowledge the receive and the passcode will actually review in the portal. So this is a eight simple step. I'm just going to go through a quick walkthrough on how our portal looks like. So basically, this is our login page. Once you have logged in, you will see this interface. You can enter the voucher number in the advanced locking, unlocking and extraction service section that is found on the left of the screen. Once you click the use, a prompt box will appear and ask you to fill out the details. You can fill in the case number or any reference as a case name. At the bottom, you can fill, select the device model and you can enter the type of passcode model and other information to continue. So to click next, you will see this interface and basically this interface will have a selection between the shipment and all the drop-off options. You can easily click on the left at the shipment to include a new address for the shipment. On the next step, you can save the address basically. And this is one of the examples of the drop-off of the device. The next step, you can upload any file that is related to the case, for example, a court order, images that they were taken to the device before it's sent over, and comments on the file that was uploaded. So you can check the terms and conditions and proceed with the case submissions and basically, once you click the submitted case, you will see a prompt saying that the request has been submitted and you receive a unique case number that is tied to each devices. This is a unique identity that to identify the device that has been submitted to our lab and it has been used for a reference for, uh, in terms of inquiries as well. This is the interface once you have submitted to the case. The orange at the right top, um, on the left top, with a status of new, is the current status that you are currently at. When there is a status change, you basically see the orange status hop to the next one. This is an example where uh, the status was uh, in a received status. When we have received the case, 
from the shipment or from the drop off. And the case status is updated on the fly in the real time. So once it has been completed, the shipment information basically will be shown in the portal as well. When you click on the receive button, the passcode and other informations will be actually reflected in the portal. You can easily click on the top right arrow in the home page to view the existing case that has been submitted for a better case management as well. And you can also export into a CSV file, uh, which is uh, able to open with a Excel file, Excel sheet. So you can actually click on the case detail to zoom down into uh, to view more information about the case. And you also can click view voucher to look at the existing voucher that you currently have if it's tied to your account. You can also use click on the use voucher to use the voucher again. So that is the simple one. So I'm going to hand over to Simon to talk a little bit about the case study that uh, we guys have experienced before. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Simon. Desmond. Thank you. So uh, we've got a couple of cases here that, um, that the Celebrate Advanced Services Labs have actually helped out with uh, in the past. So this first one is uh, a Gerald Baden Clay case. Uh, it was a case in Queensland that was quite prolific in Australia, made the media. Um, it was about the uh, the grandson of the the person who dis who originated the, uh, the Scout movement, the Boy Scout movement uh, in Australia and around the world. Um, his wife went missing. Um, he was the main suspect uh, throughout the case. Uh, and her body was found uh, at the bottom of a river a fair way away from their house. Uh, so there's a few things that um, kind of hinted towards who was involved, uh, and part of that was that uh, some of the plant specimens that were found at his house, in the garden of his house, were also found on his wife's body. And also that uh, some information on his phone um, sort of led to, to the fact that he may have been involved as well. Um, and I think that's more in the next slide, which I'll show you now. So using the logs on the phone, they were able to um, see that um, Mr. Baden Clay had uh, said that he was uh, in a heavy sleep uh, at night. Um, however, the logs on his phone actually showed that uh, his phone was plugged into a charger at 11.30 a.m even though he professed that he was actually in a heavy sleep at the time. Uh, a request came through from the uh, Queensland Police uh, to assist. He had a uh, iPhone 4S at the time, um, which was obviously pin locked, uh, and they were unable to bypass the, the pin. So they contacted the um, Celebrate Forensic Lab in Singapore, which is where De Desmond works, um, and needed our assistance for uh, the unlocking and extraction of the data on that phone. Uh, not only that, uh, they also wanted us to be able to decode that data. Generally, we uh, don't decode the data unless we're specifically asked for that service. Uh, that saves um, us looking at the data and having to testify on that data, um, and it keeps the data just in your organisation, so we don't generally look at it. However, they asked us to de decode the data and also give them the full extraction and the pin as well. Um, ultimately, um, whilst going through that data, the Queensland Police uh, discovered the actual message um, that he used to order the uh, the murder of his wife at the time. I'll now pass over to Desmond to talk about the uh, the next. Actually, maybe it's Dan going to talk about the next one in Germany. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Just for some clarification, the first case with uh, Gerard Baden Powell uh, that actually predated uh, Celebrate, but we did uh, find it quite interesting that it is a very good situation that demonstrates uh, the the power of looking through the system logs that we're actually keeping track of the battery level. Uh, I've been in contact with the originating agency uh, as well as CCL Forensics in the UK who did the research to basically point out that this is very interesting data that's being recorded within the phone itself, within the iPhone, and once plotted against a, a time graph, uh, it, it became pretty apparent that his alibi was not what he said it was. 
he was not consistently plugging his phone in every night religiously like he did on the night that he killed his wife. Uh, he was, in fact, uh, two hours late getting back into bed and plugging it in like he normally would have. So along the similar lines, uh, we learned of this case uh, earlier this year, uh, and this, this customer in Germany had actually utilized our services. We had produced a, a full uh, extraction of this iPhone device, and then they went to great lengths to go through all of the extracted information. And what they were able to do was decode the health data fully uh, and, and basically really help to find the truth and uh, lay down some pretty specific and compelling data points in the theory of what led to this uh, young girl getting murdered. So essentially, uh, she was found dead, drowned in a river, and the health data from the suspect's phone showed that he was actually walking up and down steps before and after this occurrence. Now, geographically positioning the phone and looking at the altitude change and actually measuring, typically for health reasons, uh, as you're climbing up and down, um, the actual position was him dragging her down the riverbank and that was being registered as steps. And then at the end of the terrible ordeal that she went through and, and she was ultimately killed, uh, the suspect then walked back up the riverbank and that was registered as steps climbing up a building. So really quite unfortunate, uh, but it was very interesting to see that this amount of data that is liberated from locked iPhones, uh, it's really uh, up to the investigators to dig as deep as, as possible. Uh, we are continuously adding support within UFED Physical Analyzer to decode as much information as possible. But again, some good due diligence, uh, obviously squeezing through every single uh, SQLite database uh, led to some pretty interesting uh, circumstantial evidence, mind you, but uh, additional information that really truly led to a solid conviction. So those three case studies are wrapped up. We've got about 13 minutes left to cover some questions from uh, our attendees here. Thank you all for participating uh, by asking questions. Now, there seems to be a lot of confusion with uh, slide number 17, so I will go back to it for one final brief clarification. And understandably, there's a lot of information on this slide, but this one refers to ultimately the 11 gigabytes of old data. Now, theoretically, if you were to do a chip off on an iPhone, you would have access to all 32 gigabytes of information within the chip. But with the way that the hardware encryption is implemented, there would be no point. All you would do is destroy the circuit board, potentially, and also maybe the actual flash memory chip. But using electronic methods, such as the iTunes backup, or the Apple file conduit, or the advanced services route, you can gain access to the data within the active full file system. Now, this is the 21 gigabytes that is currently utilized within this sample uh, example here. The 11 gigabytes of old data, through advanced services, we can extract it, but there is really no value whatsoever because there's nothing sitting there in that unallocated space that could be carved. There might be some random bits of strings uh, pertaining to the user, maybe their iCloud email account, maybe some low-level uh, characteristics of the phone itself, but there should be no user data whatsoever within this unallocated space. And again, that's because of the encryption that's utilized once something that the user created or received on that phone, once they delete that, the key is thrown away almost in instantaneously, and the actual payload that is stored within the flash memory cannot be revealed because it's encrypted. So I hope that answers the question uh, for that. I'll, I'll leave this up on the, on the screen while I answer uh, a couple of other questions that have come through. Uh, there is an inquiry about the iPhone XS and the iPhone XR. 
Uh, in the interest of uh, ensuring that police techniques are kept confidential and uh, in, in basically in order to protect capabilities, uh, we won't get into specifics of what models we can and cannot support here on the webinar, but know that we do have very comprehensive uh, coverage of Apple devices and Samsung and many other Android uh, handsets out there. So your best bet, if you have a specific inquiry, please contact technical support or your sales representative, or you can complete the web form that Desmond uh, described here on this first uh, page of the CBFL submission process. Now, another question, uh, can you unlock the latest iOS 12 that should have new security measures? Again, uh, we know that Apple has been responding to various threats out there uh, from both the uh, hacker community and also from the police community uh, where best efforts are being utilized to try to help out with investigations and, and basically provide closure to victims' families and help to administer justice. Uh, again, we won't comment publicly here about iOS 12 support, but please contact uh, us directly. And once we can verify uh, who the request is coming from, then we'll be able to tell you if we can uh, assist or not. Uh, a question came in about Android capability for some of the newer uh, versions that would be running on a Samsung device. So occasionally with newer devices, you might see a pop-up on the UFED that basically state that uh, the security patch is too new or there's another error or issue affecting the ability to extract the data. Now in a lot of these situations, uh, it is something that we could possibly or and most probably assist with via Celebrate Advanced Services. So please exhaust all opportunities uh, with the UFED and only once you're certain that you've tried everything possible. You may also wish to contact technical support if you're seeing something strange happening with the product. But ultimately, if it's urgent and it's a high-profile case, we would be more than happy to provide some guidance via Celebrate Advanced Services. Uh, Simon, I believe you had a question about uh, Line Messenger, which is quite uh, prevalent in parts of Asia Pacific. Um, yeah, I, have, I haven't actually seen line data in Australia. So is line a specific app, is it? Yeah, so it's, I've been to uh, Japan and it's quite popular uh, in, in Asia uh, as an alternative to WhatsApp or WeChat. And as long as we have full access to the decrypted physical, we should have access to the application data that's stored in an SQLite database, as well as any encryption keys that are also being utilized to protect that data. So I believe the answer should be yes, we should have full support for any third-party application. Essentially, if the user can see it, once we apply our methods, uh, we too should be able to see that information. I see there's a, another question on here about deleted photos um, from Heather. Um, so I, I can answer that one myself. Um, I know with iPhones, if you delete a photo from your iPhone, uh, it generally sits in uh, a folder, like a, a trash folder like your Windows, um, for up to 30 days. Um, so it doesn't instantly go to that 11 gig uh, unallocated. However, after that 30 days when the file is properly deleted, um, then there's, very, there's no chance of actually recovering that file after that point. Great, there's another question here about timeframes uh, for unlocking an Android or iOS device. Now our typical turnaround time is uh, 10 business days. And in most situations, we are achieving that, but occasionally we do encounter either a technical difficulty or an instance where we have to go through some more complicated brute force for the passcode, only if it affects the ability to truly gain access to the uh, extracted data. Uh, we do have an automated system that will send out a notice every 30 days and actually uh, provide some good information on our brute forcing process and progress, as well as to uh, possibly solicit some hints or some other information that might come about, uh, such as favorite numbers, dates of birth, 
uh, basically anything that would help to form a better dictionary that would be tailored specifically to the owner of the phone. Uh, we are all creatures of habit as humans. Uh, we've done some significant optimization of our dictionaries that we're using. And what's interesting is that after doing thousands of phones and finding passcodes that real live humans uh, set on their devices, uh, it really helps us to sort of narrow down and optimize the dictionaries in an efficient manner. So with a six-digit passcode, it might take a million different attempts if we happen to have the worst sequencing and the owner happened to pick the last passcode in that list. But we are finding that we're achieving success. 80-20 uh, rule generally applies, so 80% of the passcodes are within the first 20th uh, percentile of uh, items that are listed in the dictionaries that we've put together. I see there's a question here from Chris asking about if there's a hotline specifically for emergency situations for um, cellular advanced services. Um, I'll contact you, Chris, after this and I'll, I'll send you my details so that uh, you can contact me if you've got anything like that. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we have good coverage in the region. Uh, obviously, there's still some gaps where there's time zones that aren't fully covered. Uh, I, ideally, uh, the customer support portal can be utilized to reach out to somebody in the technical support organization at Celebrate. And when you create it through the community portal, you can actually uh, score the severity yourself. So you can say it's a critical issue and put the details of it. And we basically have almost 24-7 coverage uh, using the technical support portal. So there's also a question about court testimony and whether uh, once, basically I, I would read into it as uh, knowing whether we will fully support the prosecution. So we do become part of the chain of custody. We are part of your investigation because you have to send the phone to us for us to unlock it, perform the extraction. Everything we do is detailed in a witness statement. Uh, it's signed by the forensic uh, specialist within our Celebrate Forensics Lab. If there's anything additional that's required, uh, we are here to work with you hand in hand to see through to a successful prosecution. We obviously want to see uh, justice prevail. Uh, there may be some things that we can't explicitly state on the record or state within a written statement. Uh, there's special techniques that we may be using, but ultimately the forensic process that's applied is fully documented and it has gone through the courts in many jurisdictions over the past couple of years without any hiccups whatsoever. And generally the prosecution and the defense come to an agreement that yes, the device was locked, Celebrate helped to unlock it, the data is there, that did not change, and that is what is used to prove the case. Uh, I see there's a question here as well about how long it takes to do a full file extraction. Um, that, that varies obviously, depends on how much data is on the phone, how big the phone is. Um, we're seeing now that there's phones with um, 512 gigabytes and they're talking not far off having a one terabyte mobile phone. Um, so really the, the time it takes to do a full file extraction really depends. Um, it, it's very hard to put a, a figure on that, unfortunately. Uh, there's one more question here that's uh looks interesting. Does CAS include the ability to recover deleted messages from an app like WhatsApp or WeChat? Uh, since in UFED, sometimes we couldn't see the deleted messages, but actually the deleted messages are somewhere in the app database. So this almost sounds like a decoding issue, perhaps with UFED Physical Analyzer. As long as the full uh, extraction has been performed, uh, there should be an ability to uh, decode everything from within the databases. Uh, so you may wish to reach out to our technical support for assistance with this decoding issue, uh, but it could also be the fact that maybe all the data is not present because some of it's encrypted still. And additional more advanced methods would be required to fully decrypt it.
I think at this point we'll conclude the webinar. We've got about 10 seconds left, but I would really like to thank everybody for joining. I think it's been very productive. And any questions that we did not answer, we will be sure to contact you uh, in the coming days. Additionally, for those that have colleagues that might be interested in seeing a recording, uh, we will have that available as well. And once again, thank you so much. Uh, for those uh, that are still in daylight, uh, have a great day, and uh, thank you again. Thank you, everyone.